Okay, what do I have here? I have a Commodore C128. One of my favorite computers because these things are workhorses. They, I must have like at least, I don't know, half a dozen of these and not one of them has ever gone bad. Um, and I do use them sporadically, but I've never gotten one that needed out, you know, a lot of repair, primarily because everything is socketed. Um, the worst case scenario is your PLA goes bad and you have to unsolder this beast and, and find another one of these guys. But um, outside of that, I mean, the SID is usually pretty strong. I mean, anyways, I, I just love this board. I can't rave about it enough. But in this case, I, so I wasn't going to make a video with respect to this board when I got it. I was told that um, it wasn't working. It was untested, um, but probably not working. <laughs> whatever that means, that means not working. So anyways, I went ahead and um, I figured, oh, okay, well, if it's not working, it's probably just one of the chips and I'm not gonna bore you with, you know, just replacing a chip. But it turns out, well, I'll let you see for yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, the reason it's black and white is because I only have the Luma. Um, I'm using the DIN and I'm only using the Luma, so black and white is normal. So I'm going to fast forward this because the black and white isn't the problem. You'll see what the problem is as soon as I fast forward it. So here's the problem. That's the problem. There's no sound. So how do we troubleshoot a C128 with no sound? Easy peasy, almost like the Commodore 64. Um, First things first, we test the, the SID. Um, now, again, I thought that was the issue. So, and I wasn't gonna bore you with a simple, hey, swap the SID and you're done. Um, I swapped the SID with a known good one and I still get no sound. So, where do we go from here? Um, I started undoing the tabs here to take out the shield. Um, that's the other beauty with these boards. You don't have to unsolder tabs. They just twist. But before I do that, I figured, yeah, now is probably a good time to make this video because I always like to make a video of the symptoms and then troubleshooting and then the resolution, right? So here you go. How do you deal with a Commodore 128 without sound? So first things first, let's go ahead and unplug the power. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the RCA cable in and make sure that the audio issue isn't something with, with the cable. So here's the audio plug. I'm going to put my, ohmmeter, my multimeter on continuity testing. Okay. And, uh, that make sure that works. So first things first, is it the cable? The second pin from the top on the right hand here, that's the audio and we're getting continuity on that. So we know it's not, we know it's not the cable. Okay. So I'm going to unplug the audio cable. We don't need that anymore. So the audio comes in to this capacitor, this electrolytic capacitor, um, it's C85. So the audio here comes in to the top part of that capacitor. Okay. So we know that the trace is fine all the way to there. The bottom part of the capacitor continues the circuit and that goes over to, um, the, uh, preamp, the audio amp, um, transistor here. Okay. So that should be pin two. I can get to this capacitor. I need a, a needle here to help me with this. To get underneath that capacitor. I could do it from underneath the board, but I don't want to lift the board up yet.
Okay. I could take out my oscilloscope <laughs> needle, but I already have this handy. Okay, so I'm not seemingly getting a reading from the bottom of the capacitor, but I'm also not sure if I'm really touching it here. There we go. Okay, so the capacitor to the transistor is fine. That transistor is transistor Q2. So, so far, traces don't seem to be the issue. So that's all the way coming in from the DIN. So now let's take a look from the SID to um, coming in um, to the circuit. So pin 27 is, um, let me see, I got to turn these things around to remind myself, you know, um, because these are upside down. Okay, so pin 27, since it's upside down, would be the second one from the bottom, right? So pin 27 needs to go to R11. And that's this guy right here. So the top of R11 goes to ground. Okay, so we got that. The bottom of R11 goes to pin 27 on the SID. And I'm not getting anything. So R11 joins R28. So I'm getting connectivity there. So what I'm finding here is that pin 27 of this SID is not tracing to the bottom of these resistors. So now the issue becomes, is it the socket or is it the trace? So let's go ahead and take this SID chip out. It did come out pretty darn easy. So I think it might be the socket. It's probably a good candidate there. So let's go pin 27 of the socket here. Nothing. Okay, so now let's flip this over. Okay, like this. Let me see if I can make sure that it's in camera. So pin 27 of the, get something to hold this up here. Pin 27 is this guy here. And those resistors should be, let me see here, right here. So what I'm going to find is if it's the socket or if it's the circuit. So that's pin 27 right there. I can just hold my hand steady. There we go. Okay. And the resistors. There we go. So that's working. So the trace is fine going all the way to the socket. So what's happened is there's an issue with the socket. The circuit, when you don't have audio, and this works the same with the um, C64s as well, is so simple. There's only a few, very few things that can go wrong when you don't have sound. See the, the electrolytic capacitor, because the circuits are basically similar. There's an electric, electrolytic capacitor that goes to the DIN from, you know, inside the SID circuitry here, from the SID to the DIN, you go through this capacitor. That capacitor could be blown. It could be the audio transistor here that um, could be blown, um, or it could be the traces. If not, then you have the socket or the chip itself. So I would think that you would test the chip first, which is what I did. Um, and then you start, you know, going through the traces. So easy to get the traces from the socket all the way to the DIN. It's a very simple circuit, which I'll show you on the screen. So it looks like I'm going to unsolder the socket and we'll replace the socket and pop the SID back in and let's see if that solves our issue. So stay tuned. Okay. So I got a new socket um, 
put in. It's uh, let's see about mm -hmm. testing this now. Okay, let's get some power. And video. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, get a diag cartridge. Put in here. Okay, let's give this a shot now. There we go. So, let's speed this up and um, see if we get any sound. Alrighty then. That did it. Now we have sound. So, I'll put this little, the, the, the circuit on the screen one more time here as far as, you know, um, the SID is concerned. Again, it's a simple circuit that goes from the SID all the way to the DIN giving you the sound. So if you don't have sound, it's pretty, that's one of the easier things to test. So I think we can call this a wrap. Um, again, short video. I hadn't put one out yet. I think I'm working on the 128s. I have a lot of 128s, but um, none of them really have ever posed any problems. They're just workhorses. So, all right. Well, like I always say, enjoy life. You only, you know, live once and it's short and uh, make it sweet. <laughs> Peace out. Take care.